What's going on guys? Uh, back here with another video. Today we're working on Dell XPS laptop. We've been seeing this trend uh, starting off with Apple uh, computers uh, pushing into Windows based computers where the solid state drive is no longer a removable device. It's uh, not a pleasant uh, situation to deal with if your um, motherboard is dead the SSD can still be healthy but you have no access to it and uh, if uh, you have warranty on your device when you're sending out your device back for warranty you're actually sending it with your data all in the open so um, I don't know I have mixed feelings about it uh, today we're going to be exploring yet another uh, device that has a soldered on SSD in the form of BGA 291 uh, component it's a PCI Express SSD. It's got a built-in controller and a storage all-in-one chip. So similar function to EMMC chips that, that are found on phones. It's a self-managed memory. Uh, working with them can be a little bit challenging. If you don't have the proper tools, if you don't have the proper sockets, I would not suggest even attempting to remove this kind of stuff. Uh, in another issue on top of it, is a bit locker these microsoft uh, surfaces and uh, windows laptops usually come with built-in uh, bit locker protection which uh, if you cannot uh, find the key for you will not be able to unlock and uh, before we start guys uh, hit the thumbs up button post a comment in advance this helps our algorithm as you all know the last video did amazingly well and i thank you all for it let's keep it up and enjoy the show. This is a Toshiba memory. I have uh, adapters for this, but uh, these laptops, they usually do run encryption. I see some flux over there as well. This was worked on. I'm gonna add some flux. And I'm gonna hope that this thing will come out without too much fight. Okay, one thing I wanna do though, is uh, have it off the table so that the table is not soaking in the heat. Even if we hold it on the angle like this, I think it's going to be better. All right, so the SSD is off. So I'm gonna apply a new solder to this so that it um, clears out all of these dark spots that are oxidized.
just need some alcohol and the chip is prepared So I've got these adapters, uh, this one works with uh, Toshiba chips, this one uh, is designed for SK Hynix. So we're going to use the, the one that works with the Toshiba. So it's got the uh, connection for NVMe and attach it to this adapter. So when um, the socket is set to open you can open it up our chip has an indication right there in the corner for the key drop that in there lock it and twist and turn until it's closed so we take the PC 3000 port 0 we connect that power up okay so so far so good we got recognition lights uh, lit up let's see if this unit responds Looks like it's responding. Uh, let's get into sector edit. And look at this, we have our boot sector. And we have our last sector. So now I'm um, gonna go ahead and create a task um, that we're gonna get this device imaged to. So the first things first, we need to attach um, a one terabyte drive to clone this unit onto. I'm going to use this one terabyte Toshiba for it. So the question number one is whether or not we have a bit locker here. And of course we do. Even with data extractor, we actually do need the key. Um, we can request a recovery key or a password. So let me just uh, contact the client real quick and obtain that password so we can move forward. One hour later. We got access. Uh, now our BitLocker has this key unlocked and uh, it shows NTFS partition and this NTFS partition can now be decrypted on the flight. So we're gonna go build MFT map. It's almost one gigabyte here. Um, one thing I see uh, right off the bat, I don't have a scan chains options here. So this sometimes does happen. I don't know exactly what triggers it, but we need to create um, a sub map using drive info. So we click that. And now when I select it, I'm able to scan chains. So now the data is dripping in. This is the MFT uh, record. So the MFT record works like a table of content at the beginning of the book you would need this table of content in order to uh, know where all of the files are stored. If you uh, want to save yourself some time um, away from imaging the entire 512 gigabytes of this device, you can uh, capture the MFT catalog. MFT catalog will give you a precise idea of where everything is uh, placed and then uh, you will be able to build a selective map of what you want to image instead of imaging the entire thing uh, including zeros and including windows files and including program files that you absolutely will not be able to use for the exception of some you know like some content gets uh, saved to program files and application data folders and things like that but that's specifics you know like outlook and some custom programs maybe but overall, the data usually gets stored in the user profile, which uh, can be all highlighted and uh, built into a map. And if that ends up being 20% uh, of used space, well, you're going to save yourself a lot of time by not imaging the entire unit, but just imaging 20% of it that are critical to the client. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to send their hard drives in or solid state drives in and pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars to get uh, Windows back. You know, that's uh, uh, they they're sending it in for 
uh, for the data that was on there, not for the operating system that was running running it. So now we're just switching it over to copy only mode, and I'm gonna go back here, uh, and we're gonna scan the MFT through data analysis. This process does not take long, but it takes a little bit of time, so let's just be patient and wait till it's done. So the scanning is complete. Uh, we can go ahead and grab our selection. All right, so let's just grab these for now. 150 gigs. Disable work with copy only and we can scan it. Thank you for watching. The data of this unit was fully recovered. So if you need the service, link in description.